Picture a small town guy who used to sell pot to save some for his own use and then goes on to earn $3 million every single day. He laid the foundation for Pablo Escobar's infamous drug empire, and they even made a movie about his life starring Johnny Depp. And yet, he was worth less than $10,000 on the day he died. This is a story about building an illegal empire, aircrafts, and some crazy luck. We are talking about George Young, dubbed as the biggest smuggler for Pablo Escobar. The Problem Child George Young was the son of a small business owner who had trouble making enough money for the family. Brought up in tough conditions, George was a careless kid, to say the least. Not the best in studying, but George sure impressed his classmates with sports. His friends called him a natural leader as he made great progress in high school football. His abilities in football awarded him a football scholarship at the University of Southern Mississippi. However, George decided to drop out, and this led to a downward spiral in the life of drugs for him. The Child with Weed Thanks to his rebellious nature, George often found himself invested in criminal activities. He was introduced to drugs during his teen years and was quite fond of marijuana. He would buy marijuana in decent amounts, smoke a bit himself, and sell the rest so that he could buy more to do it all over again. He was not making a profit on it, though. George did this cycle just to get more marijuana. This was how George Young got introduced to the world of drugs. And even on his highest of highs, he wouldn't have dreamed of becoming the richest drug trafficker in the USA. The Child Who Sold Weed When George was living in a rented place in California, one of his friends from the University of Massachusetts visited him. Around that time, George used to pay around $60 per kilo for his weed, and a eureka moment happened for both of them when the friend told George that it is worth over $300 per kilo in Massachusetts. They decided to make selling weed their hustle, where George and his associates would smuggle marijuana to Boston in suitcases of a flight attendant and later in a camper van and sell it in other states. Eventually, George says that he was making hundreds of thousands of dollars by buying weed from California and smuggling it all the way to Massachusetts. The Big Business as if making that much money was not enough, an idea occurred to George that would change his life forever. George schemed that if he managed to buy the weed directly from the Mexicans, he can increase his profits even more and make hundreds of thousands to millions of dollars. And as a naive youngster, he made his way to Mexico with just an idea. But he had tough luck on his 10 day long visit as he would not trace down the producers until the last day of his stay. Luckily, he was introduced to the biggest pot dealer in Mexico. And when he asked how he could be useful to the dealer, George shocked everyone. He said that he could smuggle the produce to the United States. What's so shocking, you ask? Well, George claimed that he would do that on airplanes. His partners called him crazy, but George knew he would make it work. You know what else is crazy? Not being subscribed to this YouTube channel with entertaining crime stories. Subscribe to Crime Cartel and don't miss out. The Kid with the Weed Planes up until now, George would smuggle his weed from his stewardess girlfriend in small amounts. But what he was about to do was on a whole nother level. He got his hands on a stolen aircraft from Cape Cod, Massachusetts. And with no prior flying experience, George Young did the impossible. He made the flight to Puerto Vallarta in Mexico, hidden from radars, and accomplished his first ever massive cannabis smuggling trip. From that day onwards, George Young became the kid with the weed planes, who smuggled weed from Mexico to the United States. This was a very successful venture, and George Young went on to establish it as his own empire. The profits were massive, and in his own words, George made over $50 million during that run. If we converted to today's money, George would have made upwards of $400 million. And that still is not the best part. We still haven't scratched the surface of the billion dollar ring George was about to enter. You look at your weed operation as a whole, like how many millions of dollars do you think you made? In the weed operation, probably 50 million, which at that time was a lot of money. Right, 50 million back then is like, what, maybe 200 million today? No, probably 500 million. Okay, 500 million dollars. So you, so you made half a billion dollars off marijuana. Right. Crash landing of the weed planes. 
One of his new deliveries had just hit the United States, and George was carrying it. In the meantime, one of his contacts was brought in under heroin smuggling allegations, who snitched on George Young. He was arrested with around 660 pounds of marijuana in possession, and sentenced to five years in prison. George defended his case by saying he was being sent to prison for crossing an imaginary line for a bunch of plants. Just when you think it is the end for drugs and George Young, things take a massive right turn. In an almost movie-like moment, a big plot twist awaits in Federal Correctional Institution Danbury. The Flight of Pablo In FCI Danbury, George's cellmate was Carlos Ladar, who was the co-founder of the Medellin Cartel in Colombo. When the two exchanged information on why they were in prison, another eureka moment clicked. You see, Carlos knew that there was a market for cocaine in the United States. And George, on the other hand, knew how drugs are trafficked. It was like Walter White had met Jesse Pinkman, as if it was a signal to George that he still needs to fly those planes, with just one change. Now, George Young was flying for cocaine. Both Carlos Ladar and George Young reconnected after they got parole from prison in 1974, and they went on to create the biggest cocaine smuggling ring in the history of the United States. They connected with the notorious Colombian drug lord, Pablo Escobar, and changed the whole dynamic of drug deals in the country. He used the same strategy of planes to smuggle drugs to the United States. When Pablo Escobar's drug racket was in its prime, George Young added more ways to help in the logistics and helped him reach heights no one had ever imagined. Money with Cocaine for someone that made hundreds of thousands of dollars with weed, it is only obvious that they would make much more with cocaine, right? Well, George Young used to charge $10,000 per kilo of cocaine transported, and each flight had around 500 to 600 kilos of drugs at once. That's five to six million dollars per load, and he would fly multiple times each week to get new shipments. If we adjust it to today's rates, that's almost 60 million dollars every single day. George claims that he touched the billion dollar mark in today's currency during his time with Pablo Escobar. The Final Fall even though George Young was making a lot of money with Pablo Escobar, their relationship had its rifts, with authorities becoming more aggressive to end the drug trade and rival gangs fighting to gain more power, times were tough, and George had a big chunk of unpaid payments from the cartel. So, with increasing risk and pending payments, George decided it was time for him to end terms with the Medellin cartel. Back in the late 70s, George Young left Medellin after making millions of dollars. And yet again, when you think it's the end, it's not. George had millions and billions of dollars, but he still continued to smuggle drugs until 1994. He got caught red-handed with almost 800 kilos of cocaine in Kansas, which put him behind bars for a long time. Since he had ended terms with the Median on bad terms, he testified against his associates in the Colombian cartel to reduce his sentence. As a result, George was sent to a medium to low security prison for 20 years. Since he had married the love of his life and promised her to give up the life of crime, George did not regret the time in prison at all. His bank accounts were seized, including the one in Panama Bank, that had around $68 million. And this is how George Young's story of rags to riches to rags again concludes. But wait, we can't end this video without talking about his time with Johnny Depp. Blow. Since George's case was so openly discussed in the 90s, director Ted Dem decided to showcase it on the big screen, and George's character was played by none other than Johnny Depp himself. The movie went on to collect over $80 million, which is decent for a movie at that time, but the number might just be tiny for the man George Young himself. If George Young's net worth of hundreds of millions of dollars impresses you, allow us to blow your mind. Click on the video displayed right now to find out about the richest criminals of all time with the amounts adjusted to inflation. Thanks for watching Crime Cartel, and we will see you in the next one.